thing we're going to do is we're going to solve equations by substitution. This page right here, nice detailed example of what it looks like to solve an equation by substitution. We were right, so Hunter told us that we use systems of equations when you have two equations and two unknowns. That's what we have. Equation one, equation two. And we have two variables in those equations. We have x and we have y. You can't solve for a variable unless you get down to one equation and one variable. So that's our goal, is to get down to just one variable. Today we're going to do substitution. Which means you're going to take one of the equations and you're going to isolate for one of your variables. It doesn't matter which one. In this question, our second variable, or our second equation, is already isolated for x. So it's x equals something. So it's already been isolated for us. You then take what you have and you substitute it back in for where you see x in the first equation. So they've done that here in this next step. They've taken over oh, right here. I should probably put it in the markers so the video knows what I'm talking about. Right here. They've changed x into this part right here. Now you have one equation, one variable. One equation, one letter. It's only y. There's multiple of them, but it's the same letter. You then just isolate for y. So that's the basic equation after that. How do you put the y's together? That's all this question. Okay, that's a good question. So we've got negative y plus 4 plus 2y. So your first step would be to combine like terms. So y's can go with y's, x's can go with x's. Imagine these are actual things, right? So we'll say y equals, um, yeah, I feel like cookies. y is your cookies. So if I have two cookies and a minus one cookie, how many cookies do I have left? One cookie, that's why there's only one y left. I literally do math like that, and I'm really hungry right now. So. <laughs> I just love brown. Oh, it's crispy. I'm, I'm, Mr. Bear's not here. I'm taking care of his axle for him. And I'm eating all of his cookies. This cookie jar is like almost empty. He's going to show up and be so rattled. He's got like, he's got a lot of animals. He's got eight, eight dogs. And three horses. He lives on like an acreage. Eight bears. Like a sled team. How does he get off the horse? Oh, well, oh, okay. no, I'm fine. Thanks, so. <laughs> uh, Yeah, the dogs are like show dogs. Like, they're like, they do tricks and stuff. Uh, a way of that. Do you need like a stepping stool to get onto the horse? Well, I'm asking. Oh, okay. Yeah, I brought a bot brownie to school. Yeah. That's a great idea. Oh, that's why she's trying to get off the horse. Okay. What they did after that is they were given a point on this graph. So they were given a value for y. So they said y equals negative 2. They put negative 2 in to the original equation, because that's what you found, right? So you solve y equals negative 2. You use that point back in one of your original equations, and you find x. So we solved this. This was easy, right? We all solved this down to y equals negative 2. You then take your answer, and you substitute it in again, but back into one of your original equations. So they took this value of 2 right here, and they subbed it in right there, so that they got x is equal to negative, negative 2, plus 4. That's what that equation tells us. So x is equal to 6. Jacob. You're giving your two equations up there. Will one always, like, will one variable always have like a solution? So you just sum it in. Or will you have to find? Yeah. So you'll have to find a, a solution. Like you'll have to do one substitution of actual variables to get a solution, and then use that solution back into one of those. And it doesn't matter which one you pick. You'll get the same answer. So if I put negative two into this one, I get negative two plus negative four. Oh, sorry. No, I get, I got the black on the text. I got negative 4, move it to the other side. 2 plus 4 is 6. Same action. 
So it now says x squared is equal to x plus 2. You could also do it the other way, and you get the same thing. So, so now that we're at this point, we're going to follow the exact same steps. Isolate for x. So we're going to subtract x over, and we're going to subtract 2 over. So now it's x squared minus x minus 2 equals 0. Does that look really familiar? Yeah, we've got a quadratic and we've got it in our general form. So how do you solve for x if something's in general form? What do we do? Diamond method. It's easier than it looks. Basic diamond method. What multiplies to be negative 2 and adds to be negative 1? Negative 2 and 1. Now you have x minus 2 times x plus 1 equals 0. So what's x equal to? x is equal to 2 and negative 1. Remember, it's the opposite. What would make those things 0? So there's two x's. Which means how many y's are you now? I guess we'll find out. Take the numbers. Start with just one of them. I'm going to start with two. And sum it back to the original equation. So y is equal to 2 squared. So y is equal to 4. Plus. So it wouldn't work, right? So it'll give you the same answer in both. That means you did it right. So it has to work out that way. That's a good question. If you notice that if you sub your number into the other equation on a different y value, that's a sign that you don't have the right x. It has to work in both equations to get you the same thing. Um, yeah. Okay, that's for if x is 2. Now what happens if x is negative 1? So put it in there. So y is equal to negative 1 squared equal to 1. And it works. Works in both of them. Your solutions. So how do you write your solution? So if you took negative one and you sub it into the other one, negative one plus two is one. Same answer. Oh, X was negative one. Y was one. Doesn't matter. I chose the first one because it's the easiest one. How do we write our answer? Anyone have any ideas? Yeah, you got it. How do you do it, Dante? Uh, I think I heard you saying it. I mean, I guess you put like the y's and the x's and you get two coordinates. You get two coordinates. Remember, everything we're doing could be graphed. Everything we're doing could be graphed. Good question. Which x did we use to find that first y? That's the one that goes to that y. So the first one is 4 or 2 comma 4, because we use 2 to get 4. And negative 1 goes with 1, because we use negative 1 to get the 1. So they match up. The x's go with the y's. They're coordinates. Okay. Yeah, so like it, it, it won't always be two coordinates. Sometimes it'll be one coordinate. If we were to graph this, which we're going to do in the future. Is it okay if I erase this? Okay. We're going to think about this on a graph. A red is this one. A blue is this one. What 
does this back graph look like? Y equals x squared. It's just like this, right? Our basic old problem. That's easy. What does this graph look like? It's just a line. It's a straight line. There's no square. Right? So if you were to graph that, it would look something like that. It would be a diagonal line. That's one solution. That's your second solution. That's what we're going to learn next week, is how to graph these things and get the points by graphing them. But for now, I just want to show you that these points that we're finding algebraically are on a graph, and that's why you show them in this format, because they are coordinates. They are actual spots on the graph. So, we'll use those in spots. But again, remember, we do things so that you know that there's going to be yeah, yeah. letters and all that fun stuff. Which makes sense because it doesn't have a lot of data. Okay, let's do another one. We're going to do this last one together, and then you guys are going to do the rest on your own. So, What's the first step? Isolate for one of our variables. They're both already isolated. So that's nice and easy. Take one of them and insert what you get to where you see y on the other side. So it's going to go there. So now I have x plus 2 squared minus 1 is equal to x squared minus 4x minus 5. Which makes sense, right? Yeah. If they're both equal to y, they must be equal to each other. Can you, like, no. Yeah, that's a good question. You can't solve them unless you do this. Like, if you try to solve this right now by itself, you don't know what y is. You can't wait by oh, no, yeah, that works. Simplify it and change it. That works. Okay, we're going to isolate for x. So we want to get x all on one side of the equation. And because it's a quadratic and we know we're probably going to have to factor, because that's what we do with quadratics, we have to get everything to one side. So over here, we're trying to simplify. So what should we do over here? Time. Yeah, you should foil that, right? Right, Nola G? Yeah. Yeah, what should we do, Gainer? I know. <laughs> we, we're going to foil. I know you guys would have asked me that question because you would have gotten to this point next time and you're like, what do I do? You foil. So foil the left side. Yes, you foil the square. That's what I'm talking about. So it, this one over here on the left side will become x squared plus 4x plus 4 minus 1. That's what that left side of the equation becomes. Wait, can you pull the little check marks over? You can if you want. So if you want to bracket still. That's fine. It doesn't make a difference. Because now that we've solved inside the brackets, we can get rid of this. Emily. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It'll be negative x squared. I'll get this. They're going to cancel out. Yeah. I'll show you. I'll show you what happens. Yeah, I'll show you why it's going to work. Okay, the other side. Awesome. Question at this point. Plus four, like by itself in brackets, or is that, that completely boiling? Yeah, two times two is four, yeah, that's where I came from. Hi, do you have a question? You good now? Yeah. The other side, x squared minus 4x minus 5. The side on the left. We're going to move it all to the right. Oh, it doesn't make 
If you move the right to the left, you'd be fine. Wouldn't make a difference. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to subtract x squared from both sides. So minus x squared. And that gives me, oh, you, yeah, you can. OK, do you want to? Let's do that. So I don't lose anybody. Because I don't think you're alone on that. Oh. On the left side, bring together your like terms so the brackets will go away. And the 4 and the negative 1 will combine to be 3. So it's x squared plus 4x plus 3 is equal to x squared minus 4x minus 5. Yeah, that's a, it's not a negative 1, it's a minus 1. So it's all of this minus 1, not times negative 1. I'm going to move everything on the left side to the right side. So my left side, once I move everything over, will be 0. Right? And then, yeah, x squared minus x squared is 0. Negative 4x minus 4x is negative 8x. Negative 5 minus 3 more is. Yep, negative 8. So that should be where you're at right now. I've taken everything on the left side and I've moved it to the right side. I subtracted x squared from both sides, so they cancelled out. I subtracted 4x from both sides. Negative 4x minus 4x is negative 8x. And that's fine. Negative 3 from both sides, so I have that on the other side. I have negative 5 minus 3 is negative 8. If you move everything to the other side, you would have 8x plus 8. So all it is is it's just reverse symbols, and that's fine. Negative 8x plus 8 is the exact same as negative 8x minus 8. So at this point, you have two choices. You can move your negative 8x over and then divide out, which makes sense, because that's what we've always taught you. Or you could look at that and know right away what's the only value x that would make sense. One. Close. Negative one. Right? The only value of x that would make sense to make this zero would be negative one times negative eight would be positive. Or you can do it the other way and isolate. So add eight both sides. And you get eight is equal to negative eight x. Divide both sides by eight. Yes. Negative one is equal. You only get one point in this graph. Yeah, my solution would be to get a notebook. Not a lot of people do that. It's not together. X is equal to negative one. But now you got to find y. Ty, how do we find y? Yeah. Uh, you, you could do that. You could do that question like ridiculously quick if you wanted to. And by the time you guys did this, you guys will be doing those that question really fast. It won't take that much room. You'll you'll be flying through it. Trust me. Um, and once you start using a calculator, it's really fast. We'll try. So take your negative one, plug it into your equation. Doesn't matter which one. Yep, you pick. You pick the equation you want. I'm going to pick the top one, because I always pick the first one. We get y 
is equal to negative 1 plus 2 squared minus 1. That's the same thing as y is equal to 1 minus 1. So y is equal to 0. Negative 1 plus 2 is 1. Squared is 1. Minus oh, 1 is 0. Shouldn't be. If you foil that, you should get the exact same thing. So, your answer? It's not zero and it's not negative one. Yeah. Put in the point. So I'm taking my time because I feel that you guys would really benefit from it. I could skip this entire session and just jump into the last part of the unit if you want, Soccer. No? Probably a good idea that I do review. Probably a good idea you pay attention. That would be your answer. How can you get two quadratics and only one intersection? Hey, when they, they meet once, but then they're expanding on the other side, so they don't and quadratics aren't straight lines. You're kind of close. I mean, I looked at the graph too after I got the answer. So there's, there's two ways you can get your graphs to touch each other if they're quadratics and they'll touch each other once. They'd rather meet at the vertex. Yeah. But they don't get the Way number one is if you have a graph and the other graph is flipped upside down. And they meet right there. So just one. The, the other way that they could cross each other is if you have one right here. And you have the same graph just translated to the right. And they would only cross here and they would keep growing at the same rate and never touch each other. That's what I meant to say. I know that's what you're saying. You're right. I agree with you. Right. There's one parabola, and then uh, Yeah, but that's not two quadratics. That's a linear and a quadratic. And that is possible that they touch once. That's also true. That's called a tangent point. They do go to calculus, they go to university, that's all they ever talk about is tangent points. They're pretty important to life. But what if. Um... Wait, so that's it. Oh. So, like, you could have, like, a negative one, you could have 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 just over here. Yeah. I'm just sketching to show what it looks like so that you can just kind of get a visual of, oh, that's what it looks like. Okay, I'm going to skip the next page and we're going to move on to substitution, or sorry, elimination. You should do that page, that slide by yourself. We don't have time to do it right now for five hours because we've wasted too much time. Elimination is uh, usually more difficult for people, but if you use it at the right time, it's easy. The reason you get two different methods is one of them is usually better depending on the situation. So you'll see what I mean. So, elimination. You do elimination when you can move everything to one side of the equation, and you get it to both equations. So if you look right now, they call these equations 3 and 4. 
because my last question probably went too. <laughs> and they proved all of your x's one side and all of your y's one side for both equations. And the big thing is, is they have the same number of y's for both equations. So see how there's only one y and negative one y? That's important. Not same, good point. <laughs> It's not the exact same number. If you if you took the absolute value of both coefficients, then it'd be good. That backfired. Make it unlucky. <laughs> you need to have that same number in front. Whether it's positive or negative doesn't matter. It's got to be the same number. And it only has to be for one of the variables. It doesn't matter which variable. So your x's, they don't match up. It's negative 1 and 2. That's fine. You only need one of them to match up. This one already works out that Y matches up the Y. Can you say that the Y's to match up with 2 times X by 2? Exactly. If you don't get them to match up, you can multiply everything to match up. So, for instance, if I really wanted to match up my 2, I could multiply this entire first equation by 2. So it would become negative 2X plus 2Y is equal to 4. So you could do that. You have to make the match up no matter what. This one already does match up, so that's nice. Right, just the one. Just the one equation. Yeah, no, but I thought it was just That's good point, too. It doesn't matter if they, so if the x's and the y's both worked out. So, like, if this just so happened that I had negative 2x plus y and it matched up perfectly, that's fine. It, it won't hurt you. It actually will make your life really easy. Gosses, do you have a question? Yeah, um, on the bottom, like, the apples there, it's kind of like the 5 by 2 or 2 by 5. So, I'm going to come to get a little bit of a match Yeah, okay. Okay, the next thing that you do is you find your ones that match up, which is our y's. You pick the, if they have different operations, so this one's a positive and this one's a negative, you're going to do addition. If they had been the same, you would use subtraction. That's how they're going to cancel each other out. Plus y, plus a negative y will be zero. And that's our goal. We want to eliminate one of the variables. So we're going to add one entire equation with the other entire equation. So it's a little tricky, so we're going to do a couple of these together, so don't sweat it. If the variables were the same, because how would you cancel out y and plus y? You'd have to do subtraction of the two equations. That's the only way they would eliminate. The way that these are going to eliminate is you're going to add them together. Negative x plus 2x would give you x. y plus negative y would give you 2 plus 4 would give you Now you have one equation with one variable. And that's your goal in all of this. One equation, one variable. You can see how sometimes elimination works really nicely because x is equal to 6. So now you substitute it in to one of your very uh, one of your equations, and you'll get your answer for y. So we took six, we subbed it into the first equation. Negative six plus y equals two. So or yeah, equals two. Move the six over. So y equals eight. Um, like I'll, we'll have to do one here, so I'll try. The important thing with doing these ones, guys, is to line everything up nicely. Put your x's together, put your y's together, put your constants together. And when we start doing quadratics, put your x squared together, put your x's together, put your constants together. Make sure they're always in a nice row. It makes your life way easier. I don't know when do this versus uh, for this unit, it, it really doesn't matter because you always get the same answer. You could have done substitution and you would have been just fine. Um, you will do enough practice to a point where you'll look at them and it'll stick out like, oh, plus y, negative y. That would cancel out really easy. If there's no need to rearrange and do all that, it'll just cancel out. It, you'll get to a point where it just, you kind of notice it.
And that's kind of the way that math keeps on going. Like in, once you get to 30, and especially the trade unit in 30, you're going to get to a point where the only way to get good is to practice. You'll, you'll never just show up and get okay? Yeah, and it, like it took me my first year in university where I was like good at the trick that you do at 30 level. And then all of a sudden you can just start to see things like, oh, that would be elimination. You know, it just starts to happen after enough repetition. It doesn't take long, but you have to. No. Okay. So is everyone good at that solution? Yeah. Okay, let's do one together. Solve the following linear linear system through elimination. Anyone want to guess why it's called linear linear system? They're both linear equations. They're both straight lines. There's no x squares. Are they always going to be linear linear? No. Okay. It says to use elimination, so we're going to use elimination. Otherwise, if you looked at this and thought, I want to use substitution, that's fine. But it says use elimination, so I'm going to use elimination. So it's a How do you use substitution? Yeah, it'll always work out. How do you use substitution? You'd have to get one of these all by itself. So you'd have to like add or y, divide by 5. Then you'd put a fraction in it, and then you'd put it up. No. So you should look like this. And if it's not like this, if it's in the other method, that's fine. Just do substitution. That's what we're going to do Monday. We're going to just spend the whole day working on our calculators. Okay. The question someone had earlier, I think it was Dawson, was how do we do this on elimination scale if we don't have them match up? Like right now we have 5x's and 2x's, and that doesn't match up. So we have negative 4y's and negative 3y's, and that doesn't match up. It's kind of the same way you get a common denominator. You want to get the lowest common multiple. Remember that for grade 10? Yeah. Lowest common multiple. And it doesn't matter what you pick. If you want to pick y's to get the same, or you want to pick x's to get the same, it doesn't matter. I'm going to pick x's just like What would be my lowest common multiple for the x's? I have 5x and 2x's. 10x's. So if I multiply the top all by 2 and the bottom all by 5, it would give me 10x's in both equations. So I'm going to multiply this top equation by 2. And it's going to be everything by 2. So even the minus 10 is going to be times 2. So I just put a little times 2 on the bottom. What am I going to have to multiply the bottom one by? 5. So a little times 5 for all of them. Is this a negative 5? Or... Uh, it doesn't have to be. If you would rather change it so that it's a different uh, symbol, that's fine. If they're the same symbol, we're just going to use subtraction. As long as you have a different variable somewhere, it'll work. It'll work out. Okay, so this, if we did that properly, we could get 10x minus 8y is equal to 28, and on the bottom we would get 10x minus 15y is equal to 50. You get the exact same answer. It'll always work out the same answer. Hi. Same way that I have here. That's fine. I'm going to write. Yeah, that's fine. Right. So, how would I be able to get rid of that one? By subtracting it, right? Like 10x minus 10x is giving me 0. That means I have to minus these two equations from each other. It would be 0. So 10x minus 10x's gives you 0x's, which is 0. If it was a negative 10x? No. Oh, it'd be, because it would be minus a negative, so yeah. So whatever you choose, I see what you're saying. Whatever you choose to do to get rid of your x's, you have to use that same thing for all of them. So it'd be negative ay minus negative 15y. So it'd be like adding 15y. Push that stretch. Yes. Okay. So if you had like a negative, or say, like if they were the same on like the x's, like the both positives, but then 
the lies that was also in it. It was like, what, like, thousands? That's a good question. It's whatever will eliminate the one that you have matching. So you choose your operation depending on what's matching. The other stuff is all relevant. So it's all going to change no matter what. So we just pick what's going to eliminate. That's a good question. The tens are going to be what eliminate. It's 10x, 10x, positive 10x. And the only way to cancel those out is to subtract them. So we have to subtract everything. 10x minus 10x is 0. Negative 8x minus negative 15x is plus 7x, y. 28 minus 50 is Negative 22. 28 minus 50, negative 22. Is everybody good at this point? Now I have 7y equal to negative 22. Divide both sides by 7. y is equal to negative 22 over 7. If you did this through substitution, your life would have been miserable. It would have been, you could have done it, it just would have sucked. And, and it's one of those things that, you know, you can tell you, like most of our questions will say, hey, you're doing elimination, you're doing substitution. But it's one of those things that once you get yourself into the pickle, you'll realize, uh, this isn't working. I'll try the other method. And then you'll get good enough to see that, oh, I could just match these up really quickly. Maybe. Usually, usually, if you have a coefficient on all your variables, you should use elimination. Usually. It's not always true. Never. Neither. Ali, go ahead. Thank you, Brian. No, it doesn't matter because we changed everything together. Like, because we changed the equal sign as well, it's all good. Yeah. Eva, what about? Sorry. Exactly. So take your answer for y, sub it into one of your equations. I'm going to sub it into the first one, so it's going to be 5 times negative 22 over 7. Oh, I screwed that up. Say 5x minus 4 times 22 over 7 is equal to 14. Move that to the other side. So I'm going to add that fraction to both sides. And I'm going to divide everything by 5. It's going to be ugly. So add this to both sides. And what's it come out to be? Yeah, like add the whole thing. If you want to combine it, that's fine. If you want to change it to 88 over 7. Yeah. Why would we leave this whole thing? Oh, because we're trying to isolate fractions. We have one variable. We have one linear equation. So we're just getting x by itself. So add that nasty fraction to the other side. And then divide both sides by 5. So x is equal to that mess. I'm not going to write it out. The decimal is what, Kelvin? That's our decimal, apparently. You can leave it as a fraction if you want. Elimination usually seems a little hard, but it's really not. Some people really like elimination. Okay. 
board's just like, you know, this is just like, Okay, we're gonna do one more linear linear. And then we're gonna do quadrat. So. It says we have to use elimination. What's the first step if you want to use elimination? You have to match something up. So you either have to have X's matching or Y's matching. Neither one's matching right now. So, I want to do X's. Let's say our X's match. Okay, how am I going to make my X's match? Times the top one all by 3, times the bottom one all by 2. So that will give me 6x plus 6y equals 22. Yep. Thank you. Yep. I, I did too. The bottom one, I multiplied all by 2. So it's 6x plus 4y equals 18. Am I going to add or am I going to subtract these two numbers? Why am I subtracting? Because they're the same sign. I have 6x and 6x. The only way to eliminate it is to subtract them. It's the only way we get to 0. We want these to equal 0. So 6x minus 6x would give me 0. If we had added, we would add 12x. And that's useless. Elimination. You want to eliminate. 9y minus 4y is 5y. 33 minus 18 is 15. So 5y equals 15. Divide both sides by 5. y equals 3. Take y equals 3. Sub it into any equation you want. I'm going to pick the first one. So it's 2x plus 3 times 3 equals 11. 2x is equal to 2. Subtract 9 from both sides. 3 times 3 is 9. Subtract 9 from both sides. So x equal to 1. So what's my actual answer? Bingo. Ellen. The, the problem would be, yeah, I'm thinking for the plus side is like, if you see a question, that'll probably be multiple choice. So the answers will probably be in that form. Oh my goodness, not so. Okay. Quadratics. It's going to work the exact same way. So there, there's potential that we might have more than one answer because they're quadratics. We might only get one answer, we don't know. We might get zero answers, which is also possible. If you have no answers, that means your graphs wouldn't intersect each other. So I could have one like this, and one like this. No solutions. And, and you'll know that if you get a crazy number. You'll see it in the works. I don't think we're doing any of those. Things. But if it ever happens, it's just because they don't touch each other. So one of your answers might come out to be like x is equal to, oh, no, you, you'll get this. You'll work it all down, and you'll get something like 0, 0 equals 1. And you'll be like, that's not possible. And that's how you know there's no solution. I'll show you how 0 equals 1. I'll show you how 1 equals 2. Okay. We have to use elimination. So if you're using elimination, you want to make sure one of your variables matches up. Which variable matches up right now? The Y's. The Y's match up. If you're using elimination with a quadratic, odds are your Y's are what are going to match up. Because we always say Y equals, right? So subtract, because they're both positive, one lot. And you get 0. 0 equals 3x squared minus 13x plus 4. Yeah. So, 2x <laughs> squared minus 13x plus 4. Yeah. So, 
this, 1x squared would, negative x squared would be 3x squared. Negative 7 minus 6x's would be negative 13x. 7 minus negative 3 would give you plus 10. That is not Okay, I'm gonna do this is probably the last time I'm gonna review diamond method for you guys. So yeah, just relax. Deep breaths. Because I've seen some of you guys diamond methoding and you're screwing this up. So pay attention. Things that multiply to be 30 and add to be negative 13. And it's pretty easy to see that it's negative 10 and negative 3, and you guys are doing that perfectly. What we're forgetting... What we're forgetting is how to put that into our equation properly. So a lot of you guys are forgetting that it's not x minus 10, x minus 3. You need 3x's to come out as your answer somehow. So you go 0 is equal to, and it's 3x minus 10, and it's 3x minus 3. And you have to divide one of these by 3. And a lot of you guys on that last test, that was going to be work, were forgetting this part. That you, it's not... Sorry, I'm just going to raise my diet. You all did that, right? You divide by just three. You divide by whatever your a is. So one of these has to be divided by three. The one on the right divides by three. So I did. It, it'd be negative 10 and negative 3. You had 15 and negative 2. But that would multiply to be negative 30. We wanted a positive 30. Yeah. Divide one of these by 3. The one on the right divides by 3. So it becomes 0 is equal to 3x minus 10 times x minus 1. So what are your x values on it? Okay. What are your x values coming? Close. What are your x values, Ty? Yeah. So this one gives you x equals 10 over 3. It's always the opposite sign, and it's that number divided by that. Always works out that This one is x equals 1. You then take those answers, substitute them in, you'll get two points. Remember, we don't want x values, we want coordinates, where these things cross. We want where this is equal to that. Ah, so let's do it. Yeah, so that's a good question. And that's what's going to happen with this one, so that's perfect. We're going to do 10 over 3 first. So let's back up top. I'm going to take 10 over 3. I'm going to sub it into the first one. So it becomes y is equal to 2 times 10 over 3 squared minus 7 times 10 over 3 plus 3. Yeah. 10 squared is 100, 3 squared is 9, 2 times 100 is 200, so this is to be 200 yeah. over 9. Ooh. Don't believe me, put it in your calculator. Oh, no, it's <laughs> Minus 70 over 3, 
plus three. Punch in your calculator. Math bracket for the end. Wait. The only times the two numbers are just Yeah. Oh, you're doing the bottom one. I thought you were suddenly like. Yeah, no, I, I thought you were doing like the top of the way. Just a couple of announcements before the bell rings. First of all, there's a reminder that the UFC will be here on Monday at 3.15 in the BC suite. So any grade 12 students thinking of going to UFC, please go down to the BC suite at 3.15 on Monday. And when the bell rings so with Olivia Reisman, please go see Mrs. Rennick. And also we want to wish the Laker football team Good luck in their upcoming game tomorrow. So, good luck, guys. She's early and that's fast. We have five minutes, so we're finishing these questions. That's your first point. How do you get your other point? That's a great question. No, it doesn't matter. So if you want to put both of these in the first one, you're good. If you want to put them both in the second one, you're good. If you want to mix match up, you're also good. You'll always get the same thing. Just the way it works. Let's try the second one. Put x equals 1 into this, and you get 2 times 1 squared minus 7 times 1 plus 3. 2 times 1 is Minus 7 plus 3, so y is equal to negative 2. That's a great question. When you sub things in, use brackets. The square only applies to what's in the brackets. So it's 1 squared is 1 times 2. And that's a, that's a great point to make because a lot of people don't do that properly. Jacob. Good question. So, and I'm going to wait until I've got everyone's attention because I've answered this question at least six times already in this class. This class. So, don't blame me for asking. Good question. The problem is, people clearly aren't listening. So until I feel I have everyone's attention, I'm just going to wait. We good? The whole class I want to pay attention. I'm not going to keep going. Ty, good? Which x do I have to put into which equation? It doesn't matter. They could all go in any one. So I could put them both in the first one. I could put them both in the second one. I could mix match them. And it doesn't matter. They'll always give you the same answer. Always. So if I put one in the second one, I get the exact same answer. If you put one in why? What else? No, it's two different coordinates, right? So this goes with this. So that's one answer. 10 over 3, comma 17 over 9. That's one answer. Oh. And the other answer is 1, comma negative 2. That does matter. Oh. Your x has to match up with the y that you found it with. That does matter. <laughs> Okay, those slides we didn't do today, you should be doing tonight. Because we're not going to slow down anymore. Yeah, practice book is right here. Those are Those are Those are